Welcome to an another short video from Instrunexis. This time we are going to learn about one of the very critical documents in the world of industrial automation, the cause and effect matrix. Whether you are an instrumentation engineer, a plant operator, or a systems integrator, understanding this document is non-negotiable. Today, we aren't just defining what it is, we are going to walk through its entire deliverable life cycle. From the early conceptual ideas and safety studies, all the way through detailed engineering, construction, and finally, into daily operations. By the end of this video, you will understand how this single document acts as the central nervous system for process safety. Let's get started. So, what exactly is a cause and effect matrix? In the simplest terms, it is a tool used to map the relationship between process sensors which we call causes, and the actions taken by valves or pumps, which we call effects. Think of it as the logic blueprint for your safety critical applications. In a complex processing plant, you have hundreds of inputs and outputs. This matrix organizes them into a grid that defines exactly how the safety instrumented system, or SIS, serves to control the plant. It establishes the logical relationship between a specific process input and its required output ensuring that everyone, from designers to operators, has a clear, comprehensive understanding of the system's behavior. Why do we spend so much time perfecting this document? First and foremost, it is about safety assurance. It ensures that every sensor is properly mapped to an action to mitigate hazards and maintain safe operations. Secondly, it acts as a translation tool. It provides a structured definition of control logic that programmers rely on to write the actual PLC code or function block diagrams. Without this matrix, a programmer is just guessing at the design intent. Finally, it is a critical document for compliance and testing. It serves as the primary reference document for industry regulations and is the checklist used during factory acceptance tests, FAT, and site acceptance tests, SAT. To understand the matrix, we have to look at its timeline. It is not a static document, it evolves. It begins in the concept phase, where we establish the control philosophy and safety levels. It moves to front-end engineering design, feed, where the first draft is created based on PNIDs. In detailed design, we refine the tags and add logic timers. During the build phase, physical installation and loop checking occur. Then comes the FAT, where we verify the logic digitally. We then move to commissioning for live verification. Finally, in operations, the matrix is used for troubleshooting and managed through strict management of change procedures. Let's break these down step by step. Everything starts with the concept phase. Before we draw a single grid line, we must establish the control philosophy. This sets the strategy for our process control objectives and safety interlocks. During this phase, engineers perform a HAZOP, hazard and operability study, to identify what could go wrong in the process. Based on that study, we determine the safety integrity levels, SILE, required for the system. Crucially, we also define the fail-safe states. If the power goes out or a wire is cut, should the valve close or open? Defining these states early ensures that the plant defaults to a safe shutdown condition in the event of a fault. Once the concepts are solidified, we move into front-end design, or feed. This is where the cause and effect matrix is initially drafted. The primary task here is extraction. Engineers look at the piping and instrumentation diagrams, PNIDs, and identify every sensor and measurement that will serve as a cause. We then map the initial interactions. We aren't looking at the nitty gritty details of timers or delays yet. We are simply drawing the lines between the inputs and the safety effects like valves and pumps. This phase lays the groundwork and establishes the foundation for the safety logic that will be developed later. Let's pause to look at the anatomy of the document itself. While formats vary, the logic remains the same. On the left-hand side, we list our causes. These are our sensors. Across the top, we list our effects, our valves, pumps, and beacons. In the intersecting cells, we define the action. For example, if a specific pressure transmitter detects high pressure, the matrix might place an X or a trip command in the column for the inlet shutdown valve. We might also see commands to close specific valves or trip motors. This grid allows anyone to trace a horizontal line from a sensor and see exactly which devices will activate in an emergency. Moving into detailed engineering, the matrix matures significantly. 
First, we refine the sensor and valve tags to ensure they match the final instrument database. Unambiguous naming is critical here. Next, we define the logic types. It's rarely as simple as one sensor trips one valve. We might need voting logic, like two out of three voting, or Boolean logic using and or gates. We also configure timers and set points. Do we want the valve to close instantly, or do we need a three second delay to prevent nuisance trips caused by signal noise? These parameters are defined now to ensure stable process control. Once the detailed design is frozen, the matrix is handed over to the system's integrators. This is the translating to code phase. The cause and effect matrix is manually translated into function block diagrams, FBD, or ladder logic. These are the actual programming languages used by the programmable logic controller, PLC. The programmers take the visual representation of the matrix, the rows and columns, and convert them into the digital logic flow that the computer processor can execute. This translation step is critical. If the programmer misinterprets a voting logic requirement from the matrix, the safety system will not function as designed. Before the system ever touches the plant floor, it undergoes a factory acceptance test, or FAT. This is a comprehensive simulation environment. The goal here is 100% logic verification. We are comparing the paper logic, the cause and effect matrix we just wrote, against the digital logic running inside the PLC simulation. We trigger every single virtual sensor and watch the virtual valve's response to ensure there are absolutely no discrepancies. We test every input, every output, and every trip condition. Any error found here is logged, fixed in the code, and retested to ensure the digital brain matches the engineering blueprint. While the code is being tested, the physical world is being built. This is the construction phase. Field installation of devices takes place, where sensors, transmitters, and valves are mounted according to the design. A crucial step here is loop checking. Electricians and technicians verify the wiring from the field device all the way to the control room to ensure continuity and proper polarity. Simultaneously, the HMI graphics setup is finalized. The human-machine interface is configured so that the operators can visualize the process data and see the status of the interlocks defined in our matrix. With construction complete and the code loaded, we reach the site acceptance test, or SAT. This is the moment of truth. Unlike the FAT, which was virtual, this is live verification. We conduct physical simulations on the actual hardware. We might inject a signal into a pressure transmitter to fool it into thinking pressure is high, and then physically watch the shutdown valve close in the field. We are validating the mapped logic against the physical system's response. Once all tests pass, we obtain the final sign-off on the cause and effect matrix from all stakeholders, certifying the plant is safe to start. After the plant is running, the cause and effect matrix enters the operations and maintenance phase. Operators use the matrix for troubleshooting trips. If the plant shuts down unexpectedly, they consult the matrix to trace the root cause and identify which sensor triggered the event. Crucially, we must implement management of change, MOC. If we need to change a trip set point, it must go through a formal review and documentation process. Finally, we perform periodic proof testing. We regularly test the entire loop, sensor, logic, and valve to ensure the system hasn't degraded over time and that the matrix is still functioning as intended. Even with a robust process, mistakes happen. Let's look at common pitfalls. The first is ambiguous logic. If the matrix doesn't clearly specify if a trip is latching, requiring manual reset, or non-latching, auto-reset, it can lead to dangerous confusion. Another issue is missing bypass switches. Without maintenance bypasses defined in the matrix, you cannot test instruments without shutting down the whole plant. Finally, beware of documentation drift. If you change the PLC code but don't update the matrix, your blueprint is now wrong. Keeping the documentation synchronized with the field reality is essential for safety. Summary slide with logic blueprint and safety success. To wrap up, the cause and effect matrix is much more than just a spreadsheet. It is the logic blueprint for your entire safety system. We have traced its journey from a concept in a HAZOP study, through the rigor of detailed engineering and coding, and finally into the physical reality of construction and operations. It connects the physical world of sensors and valves 
to the digital world of PLC logic. By understanding this life cycle and avoiding common pitfalls, you ensure the reliability of your facility and the safety of everyone working in it. Thank you for watching.